Hello, BookTube, and welcome to ShakeTube 2017. Uh, this is the uh, very informal read-along that's been organized by Curtis at Curtis Books and Film and Mukash over at his channel, uh, in which we read a Shakespeare play a week until the beginning of December, uh, and then make discussion videos about them. Uh, and right now, we're well along. We're up to uh, Shakespeare's famous play, Henry V. Uh, and I, I apologize ahead of time for the sniffling uh, that will plague this video. Uh, it's in the mid-80s Fahrenheit here in Boston with uh, rainforest humidity, and it's been this way for a month. It's, it's pretty clear. I know uh, earlier in the month I was saying you never can tell. I think it's pretty clear now that Boston is not going to have an autumn. That like it has four times out of the last six years, it's going to shift literally overnight from high summer to winter. Uh, the trees are still changing, but that's not going to take long before that stops happening. And then, you know, the ch little children, children who are who are two or three years old now, will grow up in a Boston that does not have seasonal foliage changes of any kind. They're going to grow up in a Boston that's extremely different from the one where I grew up and the one that has been true since this part of the eastern literal um, congealed from magma millions of years ago. <laughs> so so we'll just have to... Uh, it's it's caused allergies of mine to, to react that would ordinarily be long since put to sleep. Long since. Boston, on the doorstep of November... I should not be wearing shorts outside. I should not have an air conditioner in the window. I should not have ceiling fans and desk fans going all the time. Otherwise, it's unbearable. I should, I should, the, the city should long since have had uh, at least one killing frost. It should long since have had maybe a dusting of snow on a really cold night. We're, on, we're almost in November, and it is full-blown summer here. Uh, so that's pretty creepy. <laughs> it, it, it no doubt accounts for the stuff knows. Uh, but getting to uh, to Henry V, uh, it's a it's been a lauded play of Shakespeare's from the beginning, from the moment that he wrote it, and you can sort of see why. It's about a new, vital young king on the English throne who decides to assert his right to the French throne and make war on the continent. Uh, and is, you know, victorious against odds, and the, there's the famous St. Christmas Day speech where it's it's the activity of a king making war and threatening to reduce whole cities to rubble uh, is treated as a boy's own adventure. It's, you know, aren't we glad that we're mucking it out here in the mud now? Aren't we going to remember it when we're older and be happy that we did? Uh, and it ends, of course, with the with with Henry self domesticating and taking a French wife, uh, and there are some charming scenes there. But I, I got to tell you, a booktube. Uh, now that we're in the full confessional mode of shake tube, I have never enjoyed this play. It has always struck me as extremely simple. It's jingoistic, and it was always meant to be. Unlike a lot of other things that Shakespeare wrote that have been, where that, whose interpretation has been changed by needs that came later. The interpretation of this play has always been the same, and it's a little boring. A strictly nationalistic, jingoistic works like this always are a little boring for me, uh, even when they're, God forbid, John Wayne movies. <laughs> and that's essentially what this is. And it, that it, uh, So it has some lovely bits, uh, you know, by Shakespeare. This, is, this, this play is happening in the full strength of his ability as a wordsmith and a dramatist, although the the actual dramaturgy in the play is kind of weak, in my opinion. Uh, but the the overall gist of the thing uh, is uh, fairly one note in a way that is, I I would argue, uh, uncharacteristic for Shakespeare and uncharacteristic of the plays that sort of set this one in motion. It's no surprise to me that that this play cannot support Falstaff. It's no surprise to me that he's gone before we get going here, because where, what place would he have in Henry V? I, I can't even imagine. Uh, and as is usually the case with Shakespeare plays, where I don't particularly enjoy the play on the page, I've often sought to, to salvage that by enjoying it on the stage. Uh, and I have seen Henry V many, many times on stage. Uh, and, of course, I've seen the two epic 
movie adaptations, Laurence Olivier's and Kenneth Branagh's, uh, both of which are superb for very different reasons. <laughs> uh, I, I am a big fan. I think I've mentioned, I've mentioned on Shake 2 before, I think Kenneth Branagh is a brilliant Shakespeare director. And his Henry V is a, just fantastic. He gets great performances out of everybody. Uh, and Laurence Olivier's, you know, it was, his movie was very much done in order to goose nationalism. It was, it was very much done as a patriotic gesture. Uh, and <laughs> those things just don't, they don't work for me unless they are matched with uh, character studies. And there are no character studies in Henry V. He is, if you take a step back from the, the, you know, the gorgeous words that Shakespeare gives him and gives all the other characters, he's a very unattractive character to look at. He's, he, he's using justifications at the beginning of the play in order to make war. And he's, his motive for making war is entirely personal. It's self-aggrandizement. And the, the, yes, there are, there are great chuckles provided by the, the enlisted men, by the, by the rank and file soldiers. Uh, and there's, there's a wonderful scene uh, at the climax where uh, Henry dons a cloak and wanders about his camp anonymously, giving his, uh, his soldiers encouragement and questioning them, giving them, as he puts it, a little touch of Harry in the night. Uh, th there are little bits and pieces that work like that, but they, they, don't ever, they don't ever combine to make Henry, who is, you know, the absolute central character of the play, they don't ever combine to make him attractive or interesting or multifaceted. So I don't know really what they combine to, except, you know, uh, to echo John of Gaunt from from an earlier play that we read, you know, this this sacred plot, this England, this, this it's uh, a, a little of it goes a long way with me, <laughs> especially since, but and we've seen this already, we've seen this by this point in Shake Two, especially since Shakespeare has already demonstrated by this point in his career that he can do so much more. Uh, that's what's going to frustrate me about some of the later comedies that we do as well. Uh, uh, so I. <laughs> I'm afraid my my experience with Shake Two 2017 this time around this week uh, is less than ecstatic. I, I know it's heresy. Henry V is a very popular play, but I have never enjoyed it, uh, except on the very baseline level that you can't help but enjoy all Shakespeare. Uh, but that that lackluster sort of you know mezza mezza response disappears completely next time. <laughs> next time. We're doing Hamlet. <laughs> and uh, you can be sure that I will, I don't know if my allergies will still be going strong, but you can be sure that I will not be giving you a meh <laughs> when it comes to Hamlet. <laughs> so we'll reconvene then and I'll see you and we'll see how long it takes me to shut up. <laughs> Thank you, book two.